young lady we're about to bring in. Everyone knows that formerly from out of Eaton, she's the one and only Lisa Nicole. How you doing, Lisa? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm it's good all... to be here. Amen. Amen. Uh, good to see you. Really is. It really is. Um, you know, we 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 based in Philly, man, and and we love the whole feel of the uh, of you know of the, the type of music and the soulful voice that you have. You know. Thank you. Some of my favorite people are from Philly. Um, wow. I was just in a meeting, uh, a lunch meeting with some fellow worship leaders, and some of them were from Philly. And I was like, you know, they were talking about how they're aggressive. And I was like, y'all, yeah, y'all are mad aggressive. <laughs> yeah, yo, I'm going to tell you something. We cross on red lights. It's like, it's like. <laughs> it's just wild. It's just wild. Y'all, y'all, what, how do you say y'all are drawing? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we drawing. Yeah, yeah. We, that's I love y'all, though. I love y'all, though. Yeah, that's Philly, man. It's crazy. Um, you, you, you know, um, this new song you got out with, uh, uh, with uh, Daryl Walls, you know it's um, awesome song. I, I really love it. I, I just want to ask you one: Where did that song come from? Did you write that, or how did it happen? So this song um, is a, is a remake. So I was mm -hmm. asked by this group; uh, they were doing a project called the '90s Worship Project, and it mm -hmm. was like a throwback to Darlene Check, uh, Fred Hammond, um, Ron Canoli. And uh, they asked me to be a part of it and asked me to cover Fred Hammond's uh, song, Just To Be Close To You. And yeah. I was like, what do you do with that song? Like, it's so iconic. It's so huge. Um, so I just prayed about it and just started writing. And I wrote verses and a bridge to it. Um, and then we used the chorus of his original. I kind of re-sang that, Just To Be Close To You. So it was produced mm -hmm. by my friend Darian Duncan, and it features Lisa, me, Lisa Nicole. You know, one of the songs that you have on, under your name, uh, Same God. I love that song. I think you did a great job on it. Thank Can you. you tell me about that song and, and how did that come about? Yeah, so I was going through like a crazy time in my life and a friend um, sent me that song. She was just like, just listen to this song. And I had heard it before, but you know how things hit different depending on where you are in life. And it just ministered to me so much. And I um, was asked to do like just to put out a song. I'm on Dare Records and they are like, when are you putting out music? And I'm like, I'm working on it. Um, so I decided to cover that song. And my prayer was that it would just be, you know, a, as much of a blessing to others as it had been to me. Amen. 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 You know, um, you know. Uh, going back in time a little bit, you being, um, a, you know, a part of your group uh, yeah. back then out of Eaton, you know, I'm going to tell you uh, back then, in, like in F Philly is really an odd place because it's like back then, you know, we had to know who your pastor was, who this was, you know, <laughs> and, and the hip hop feel, it just didn't take well in Philly. So it was like a, it was like a, like this, a group of us that really yeah. listened Seriously, because, you know, the cross movement, I don't know even the cross movement. Oh, I love cross movement. Yeah, yeah they're out of Philly. So, yeah. you know, Deuce and them, they're out of Philly and, you know, and uh, Truth. So we all like, these people don't accept nothing. But, you know, <laughs> when I go to a, you know, Pentecostal church. Uh, uh, let me tell you a story. So we, yeah, uh, my yeah, sisters yeah, yeah. and I, one time did um, a show in Toledo, Ohio. It was a okay. Church of God in Christ, Church of God in Christ Church. Mm -hmm. And nobody told us. We showed up with braids, with jewelry, with makeup, and with pants for a midnight musical. And by the time we finally got on stage, people looked, took a one look at us and they were like, uh-uh, come on, baby. Like they started moving their kids and getting yeah. their kids out. Cause it is, you know, it was it was tough for those people that were on the cutting edge and trying to give young people an alternative, um, something to listen to. So I appreciate, you know, that you were open. Um, I love the cross movement. They were trailblazers uh, and what big they time. did. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. They, um, people don't notice, but they wasn't accepted in Philly at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I mean, I, like I said, Philly, y'all are special. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, 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 they kind of booted them out. But you know, you, you guys was young, you know, young girls. Y'all was dressed nice, y'all pretty, you know. And uh, like, how did y'all parent? You know, you, 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 what, what are you gonna do with it, right? What are you gonna do with it? What are you gonna do with it? Now, nah. <laughs> <laughs> try to use it for God's glory. That's all you can Don't do. Use it for His glory, <laughs> like girl, <laughs> please. <laughs> no, nah. but so, so, how did your parents handle that? You guys being so young. And because, you know, you guys are from different families, correct? No. So we're all sisters. Same mother. Are same you mother, kidding me? Sisters. Yep. And uh, my parents divorced when I was five and we moved to uh, Nashville, Tennessee in a long time ago um, because my mom heard that Benson Music was looking for a girl group. 
Mm. And she got a job directing the Fist Jubilee Singer. She's a concert pianist and mm. uh, has her doctorate in music. And we moved to Nashville, started dancing for different Christian artists, doing talent shows. We did one talent show that Jamie Foxx hosted. Like, this is way back in the day. And it really? was all like gangster rap. Like, everything was like, <laughs> like the whole thing. <laughs> we come out and we're just three like skinny little girls. I think Danielle was 12. Mm -hmm. I was 17, 16, 17. And uh, we did our did our show, and um, through that we met this lady that connected us to DC Talk, who who was the biggest like thing yeah. in Christian music at the time. Yeah. And so then they started Goatee Records. But my mom was like, you know, we'll let you you sign the girls if you take them on tour with DC Talk. And so a as teenagers, we went on a sixty five city tour with no parents, um, just us and our road manager, and that was the start to Out of Eden. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They are, but you know, Goatee is big for that. They did the same thing to Jamie Grace. My God. It's like, yes. <laughs> no parents allowed. I'm like, right. what's that about? <laughs> what's that about? <laughs> right. No, like, but our parent, like, my mom had a job. Like, she couldn't, she couldn't go. Uh, we had a, a 1975 Chevy van mm -hmm. that still had like carpet, had an eight track. You know, DC Talk had a tour bus. You know, we were just like out there just, trying to make it um and just do what you know we felt called to do it was crazy wow that's cool though i so your mom is a classy pianist See, yeah this is the stuff i like talking about man it's like yeah. the behind the scenes stuff and you think that you know they, they'll meet you guys and they think that you know they don't know nothing they just cute and sing you know <laughs> but you all skills on the piano and then you guys play she tried she tried to teach oh, me Lord, I, no. like i was it was hard because she was a child prodigy my grandmother oh. uh, was an opera singer um, and she, you know, my mom tried, but I was stubborn. I see it in my kid. Now I'm like, Oh Jesus. Mm. Um, and I, and she was just so good. And I was like, I'm never going to be that good. So I yeah. kind of gave up. I was like, I'm just going to focus on songwriting and singing. Um, but I regret it. I regret it to this day. So anybody out there, your parents are trying to teach you something. Listen, I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> amen. Amen. I'm gonna come forward to your music. I, I, I'm just newsy. So, uh, <laughs> you, you know, uh, your group, you know, you guys are out there. You, like, why did you guys end and why did the transition and what happened? No, that's a good question. So we had put out six studio projects mm -hmm. and then we did a greatest hips project. And to be honest, um, the industry was hard. Like it was mm. tough. We didn't feel like we were, you know, making like the money that we wanted to make um for mm -hmm. us to be traveling and touring as much as we were we were just like this is a struggle sometimes yeah. also you know we had done that since we were teenagers and my sisters you know we all wanted to like branch out into other areas of life i was interested in theater um, and hosting my sister Andrea wanted to be a nurse she had always wanted to be a nurse and she mm. ended up going to college and going to nursing school and she's Praise now God. a pediatric NICU charge nurse at Vanderbilt Hospital um, mm. Danielle has got this incredible business mind and she wanted to explore that so she worked, went on to work with E1 Records and now mm. she's an executive marketing director at a company um, so it was really just like we felt like we had done our job we felt like we had kind of fulfilled the purpose mm -hmm. um and we just kind of you know like we we were sisters so it was like if we agree it's that's all that matters and we were like okay bye deuces um in retrospect wow. i wish we had um maybe taken a little bit more time to explain it maybe taken a little bit more time to you know on the off ramp but we were just like are you good i'm good are you good i'm good okay cool peace out and that was basically it you know, yeah, we well, well that's you. I mean, we, we all do that in our youth. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. pretty much like, you know what? I'm out. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's like, mm -mm, I can't do this no more. Because, you, you know, uh, so many people capitalize off of the backs of African Americans. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm that dude. And, yeah, um, yeah. no, seriously, I, I can't, man. It, it, is, yeah. it is with me. Um, yeah. And what we see all of them and they pull you, oh, you're the next this one. I mean, it's it's so funny. I mean, I talk about it because um only because this person made made it public. Mm. But um, you know, going to like goatee records, like how when um Holland came out, I know you you probably followed them because you were probably part of the you know the label. And when Holland came out, somebody else's album was supposed to come out before that. Oh. And they held that album. Uh. And they put Holland out. And, you know, when Holland came out, you know, it's like, all right, we use enough to you people now. Now mm -hmm. we're going to put, you know what I mean? And it's nothing against her, but it's just like, it's so, people don't understand how how divisive that, that is when it comes it, to us 
Yeah. yeah. The music yeah. industry is tough. I think because we were the first group on Goatee, they were like learning. They became our family. They took, yeah. you know, good care of us and loved us. But there's a lot of other factors like the music industry itself was not created for artists to make money. Yes. So when it came to the type of deals that you had that were very normal and, you know, par for the core, it wasn't like they were doing, you know, somebody's doing something, you know, illegal or undercutting us, but it's just the nature of the business um, isn't for art. It wasn't built for artists. Well, exactly. exactly. Yeah. And then we had a lot of, we had a hard time. Um, we were, you know, black girls in a very, you know, we were more on the CCM side than we were on the gospel side. Yeah, um, sure were. <laughs> gospel was slower to, ex you know, like now you listen to the radio and you've got a wide range of stuff. Then not so much. Um, you needed to be like ah, and doing all that. And yeah, we, that wasn't who we were. Um, so fighting the battle of acceptance in the CCM industry you know, was, was tough. Like we had to break down a lot of barriers. Um, and, 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 you know, those still things still exist, you know, today, I think we're a lot closer, but we've got a long way to go. You guys were before Trinity, weren't you guys? Yeah, we were, be we were before Trinity. Um, we were before, I mean, as far as, I don't know, like their inception, but as far as like their presence in the industry. Yeah. Um, yeah. We were, we were first. Yeah. 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 It, that's what I'm, yeah, I'm talking. Yeah. Cause the yeah, Trinity actually came after Mary Mary cause Mary Mary yeah. popped up yeah. and Trinity yeah. came after that. You guys was like back when, um, Oh God, it's, it's a couple of groups that were out, uh, female yeah, I think groups. Witness was out. Yeah. They, they were in the gospel space. We were the first, it's a certainly black female group in the CCM space. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, but, you know, what's sad is that it, they still separated as Christian music and gospel music. You know what yeah, I mean? So yeah. it, it, it's always going to uh, rear its head because we're in a sinful world and they're going to keep on, you know, propagating, you know, that. That and it's, it's that's always been bizarre to me because gospel music, I mean, gospel music is gospel music, right? Like Amen. It, Amen. it's it is there's history, there's culture, there's tradition there, and you don't want to lose that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like Christian music is not a genre. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like it's about the message. And so I do feel like with Jackie Patillo as the president of the GMA, I do feel like she has worked really hard and is working to make it more inclusive yes. uh, and make it represent all of Christian music where gospel music is a genre. But you could have like a white singer that sings gospel music do gospel music. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's more about the style, I think. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It is. It is um, uh, really about uh, style um, when it comes to it, because it's like you know. I mean, you, you, you off the bat, you you hear it, and yeah. then between 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 gospel and and between um, uh, Christian music, you have K Love. <laughs> 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 it's like they make their own world. They was like, no, no, like, no. They're we like Apple. No, we don't. <laughs> We we don't do we want to do. Yeah, exactly. I, I said, what is that? You know what I mean? I want the, a blueprint for that. Yeah, no. you go. <laughs> you got it. You got it. You're doing your own it's, thing. Yeah, it's funny, man. It's funny. But so, so you know, now fast forward, and you know, uh, you know, you 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 guys retire, and you saying, you know, I'm I'm chilling. I you know have my family now, and beautiful home, by the way. You know thank what I mean? You. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and black folks all in your house. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, but, oh, no. God, so funny. Uh, oh my god! Oh uh, no! Just like Lord, don't show my head. <laughs> you know? We will show up. Right. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I'm sorry. I like to play. I'm so no, sorry. No, me too. Me too. <laughs> but, so you know, you retire for a while. So what happens like in in between time from now to the time you you start to resume your career? Yes. Yeah, so I um did a lot of theater in Nashville. I did um. Uh, hosting. I was a host for the Gospel Music Channel, mm -hmm. hosted a show with Dr. Bobby Jones, um, okay. co-hosted the Verizon Wireless How Sweet the Sound competition with Donna Lawrence, and then continued to write and do music. I had my baby, Sophia, um, who's now 13, which is crazy. Um, and then um, started pastoring, worship pastoring a church in North Carolina, um and you know just really like dove into like motherhood really like with both feet um and you know always wrote and stuff like that but 
it, you know, there's a part of you, like if you're creative, there's a part of you that just needs to be fed and needs to be yes. doing what God has called you to do. If you have a purpose, you know, I don't think God gives you five talents so you can use two and bury three. He wants you to use all of them. And so that was like a process for me to come, you know, have that clarity, like, okay, God gave me this, like he wants me to use this and, mm -hmm. and figure out how to do that. So I'm grateful for my friend, Michael Anthony Taylor, who's the CEO of Dare Records. I'm grateful that he gave me a home and gave me uh, an opportunity to, you know, release the sound that God has given to me. Amen. And now you have, you know, just to be close to you, you remake of Fred Hammond's. Um, how did that happen? Yeah. So the 90s Worship Project is a documentary on 90s worship music with mm. uh, Darlene Check, Ron Cannoli, Fred Hammond. They asked me to be a part of it. And this is the song that they wanted me to cover. And I was like, how do I do that? Like, this song is iconic and, and mm -hmm. simple and beautiful and it just it doesn't need to be touched um but i kind of took the approach of let me put words to why we need to be close to god and what are the things that keep us from god yeah. um so i rewrote the i wrote verses wrote a bridge um and put you know my kind of music uh behind it um you know a little ratchet for jesus and yeah. uh <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, people call it meditate 2.0, like meditate, um, mm -hmm. of Eden. and it does, it does put you in that meditate feel. Hey Amen. It, it does. I think you did a, a wonderful job. Um, Thank you. But no, you, you really did. Um, it, it, it relates to, I know it relates to my audience. Hey Amen. Yeah, check out. So my sisters and I just released a single, um, it's our 30th anniversary. So we released, did a re-release reimagining of lovely day 3.0 really yeah yeah it's a vibe so check that out oh yeah lovely day okay yep the one yeah. and only lisa nicole much love <laughs> to you i thank you so much for being so gracious thank i really you. do i really do appreciate it thank you god bless god bless you talk to you soon all right bye-bye all right sure huh? hey what's up i'm lisa nicole and you're listening to praise Alleluia with brother d and sister a